Help! Oh my gosh, my allergies are bad. Like, I can't even see, guys. And it wasn't just because my eyes were closed. Now that they're open, I can't see either. Whew. How Finland found a solution to homelessness. How you guys doing? I hope you're doing good. Except to the people who leave me mean comments. <laughs> just kidding. I hope you're doing good, too. A solution to homelessness. That's big news. Homelessness is a huge problem over here in America. To, to the extent that it's, like, mind-blowing sometimes. <clears throat> Especially in uh, cities with expensive housing. Imagine that. Imagine that. Where it costs, like, double... <laughs> Double the average income just to rent a 200 square foot apartment. Some I made that up, but it really does. It, it's it's insane how expensive housing is lately. And by lately, I mean the last like five years. And it was already expensive before that. But apparently Finland found a solution. Well, the rest of the world would love to know it, Finland. Especially here in America. Explained with Dom. Go check out his channel. Link down below. I saw this video a long time ago pop up. I've been waiting to watch it. I cannot wait. What is the solution? Homelessness is often considered a homelessness is often considered a problem that doesn't have a solution. But there is one country that may have found it anyway. Finland. I mean, there are solutions. You know what I mean? Like people have thought up solutions. Like in a fully communist country, in theory, homelessness doesn't exist. So there's one idea. Now, does that work? <laughs> but there are, you know, some people have tried. You could also just build more houses. Finland has developed a unique strategy for getting homeless people off the streets and back into the society, and it aims to completely eradicate homelessness by 2027. And although Japan still has technically the lowest homelessness rate, the Japanese success is actually quite questionable, while Finland has been praised again and again for its results. Okay, so Japan actually almost solved homelessness. So. Finland's trying to get there by 2027. Well, I'm curious now how it's going, you know? I need to look up a chart. Hold on. All right, folks. I'm trying to find a chart here. Ah. The heck? Well, this only goes to 2020. Well, it's certainly going down. That much is apparent. 2022. Wow, only 4,000 people were homeless in Finland in 2021. I mean, just that is remarkable. And in 2022, 3,600. So that itself is like a over a 10% decrease, right? Wow. Seems to be working at that rate. Uh, 2027 might be a little bit of a lofty goal, but it looks like 2030, maybe it'll be gone. I don't know. So how did Finland manage to do it? And why aren't we just doing the same thing everywhere else? This is how Finland solved homelessness. But first, a quick message. If you like what I do, explaining how the world works by going beyond the headlines and challenging what we think we know about it, do consider becoming a supporter on my Patreon. For Go check out his Patreon, fifty. Folks. Get to get out. Spectrum business is made to ah. work the way small business Finland is famously the only country in the European Union where numbers of homeless people are actually significantly decreasing and have been for several decades. Okay, now I need to look up US homelessness. I almost feel like it's going to be going up, which is sad. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you can see that pretty much since 2016, it's been going up. This goes only until 2022 in America. How pathetic is that? It's been, it went down up until 2016. Hmm. 
and then it just started going back up. That's pretty sad. And it's not like other European countries are not trying. They all have shelters, organizations giving out aid, and dedicated national strategies. But most of them, including the UK, Germany, or France, still see their numbers going up rather than going down. So what? So it's not just America. Is Finland doing differently? Well, as they At say, at least there's that. Hey, if you want average results, do the same thing as everyone else. And if you want unique results, you have to use unique methods as well. And so the Finns have turned the traditional approach to homelessness on its head and committed to a radical strategy that became known as housing first. Basically, there is usually a reason why someone ends up homeless, whether it's because of mental illness, drug addiction, because they lost their job or something else. Over here in America, it seems like drug addiction is a huge factor. I don't know if that's the case with everywhere else in the world, but my goodness, it is such an issue over here in America. It causes so many issues. But the idea behind how most countries approach homelessness is that the person living on the street should start by sorting out those problems first while living in a shelter. And only after that, they can get access to permanent housing. This has been called the staircase approach because the homeless person is basically expected to gradually move up through different levels. They're expected to stop taking drugs, undergo mental health treatments, and if they make progress, they can move on. With the permanent housing, as a final reward. But the problem is that this approach is not actually very effective. Mm. Putting drugs... I mean, it sounds kind of logical. ...or managing serious mental health issues is already difficult when you have a home, and it's basically impossible when you're homeless. In other words, we expect people living on the street to do what many regular people are not able to, and so it's not surprising that most homeless people get stuck on one level of the staircase, as they fail to complete the tasks to move on, and eventually they relapse, get evicted, and go back to the street. So Finland, seeing that the traditional approach was not very effective, decided to turn this on its head. Yeah, I mean, I can see how that is um, uh, such a difficult situation to be in where you've got caught up in this addiction and you end up on the streets. And at that point, <laughs> the addiction is the only thing keeping you going. You know what I mean? For a lot of people. It's the only thing they look forward to. It's the only thing they have left is whatever that addiction is. Without it, you know, if they just stop doing it, man, in the short term, it would just make their life even more difficult, which is wild. That's a difficult problem. Had and try out something very different. Rather than thinking of housing as a reward for successfully integrating into the society, Finland based its approach on the idea that with a permanent home from the beginning, solving your own problems becomes much easier. Mm. And so the state started providing permanent housing in the form of small individual apartments, not as the final reward, but at the very beginning, and to basically mm. any homeless person who asks for it, and without strict conditions. People living in the housing provide provided by the state are not required to give up drugs or go to a treatment and they're not evicted if they relapse. They are, however, required to pay a small rent, which means they need to have an income and they have a very strong support system, which they need to take. Wow, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this looks beautiful. Um, but I'm just thinking about the implications of what he just said. Okay. So what if you can't pay the rent? I guess that's the first obvious question. He said you have to pay a small rent. What if you don't? take part in. In most cases, the housing is provided in centers with around 100 homeless people living in Watch this if you want to make solid contact. During your individual apartments that are looked after by it. I will say I am the issue. It seems like Finland Never let this issue get too far out of hand to where this solution looks great, and I bet it works great. It is working great, 
But as we already saw, Finland only has 4,000 homeless people. I'm looking up the Finland, the population. I mean, there's only 5 million people in Finland. So you compare that to America. Well, okay. I guess per capita, it's not too much different than America, which is crazy because America has like 500,000 homeless people. It just shows how big a, of a country America is. Um, I'm just saying that logistically, like building these apartments and housing 4,000 people sounds like a much more attainable task than half a million people. But I guess, you know, on the state level, it's a little bit more doable. A team of around 20 on-site social workers and they provide support with everything from bureaucracy job hunting and getting access to addiction or mental health treatments mm. and they also keep things from going off the rails but how it works is one thing and if it works is another one so does it well in the mid 1980s there were around 20,000 homeless people in Finland and according to national estimates in 2021 this figure has decreased to just under 4,000 that's amazing. That is amazing. Now, I will say, of course it works at decreasing this stat. The strategy is literally to give them a house. If your strategy is give homeless people a house, yeah, you're going to have less homeless people. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty straightforward strategy. And it's just something, they, they do it with just so many less um, strings attached, you know? You don't have to prove you're not using drugs or anything. I would like to know what happens if you don't pay that small rent. Because a lot of homeless people don't have a job. Obviously. In fact, I'd say... Here in America, homeless people, 98% of them don't have a job. So how do you pay any kind of rent? Do you pay it with, I mean, it sounds like the only income a lot of homeless people have here in America is, you know, begging for money on the, from people. So is that, I don't know. Is that what they use to pay the rent? And so it looks like a success, but is it really? The critics of the Finnish system say that this just hides the problem and the numbers are artificially decreased by putting everyone in government paid housing rather than actually reintegrating them into the society. And that is a legitimate criticism. Well, that's kind of like a different issue. We're talking about homelessness. The results are only possible because of the continuous support paid for by the state. The numbers of those who transition from government housing to living completely independently are quite small. Mm. And if you would remove the government support, the homelessness numbers would immediately spike once again. But oh, yeah. That is a really hard problem, though, huh? I mean, how do you go? It's just, it's just such a difficult problem. How do you how do you how do you get someone if you're if you're having housing for free how are you ever gonna like it would be really hard to transition from that to paying for a house especially with how expensive the houses are these days but on the other hand, that's the whole point of the policy. You don't need homeless people to turn into model citizens who are addiction free and who are completely independent. In the Finnish model, it's already considered a success when you get them off the street and into a controlled right. safe environment when they're able to pay that is a definitely a success small rent every month and when they're slowly one step at a time reintegrating back into the society now naturally this costs a lot of money the finnish government spends a lot of money on buying apartments and turning them into homeless housing subsidizing developers now i will say what's a little bit you know they show now and i'm just trying to be real here 
You know what I mean? I'm not trying to live in a fairy tale. No, and when naturally, they show, this costs a lot of money. The Finnish government. I'm trying to find this footage of the girl washing dishes. spends a lot of money on buying apartments and turning them into homeless housing. Subsidies back into the right society. There. Now, naturally, this costs a lot of money. The Finnish government. Where is this freaking girl washing dishes? <laughs> Am I crazy? Hold on. There she is. I think it's like a stock photo. But my point is that if we're living in reality, um, here over here in America, this is probably not what most homeless people, if you gave a homeless people off the street an apartment, government apartment, and said live here, it would probably not look like this. It would it could very well end up, um, you know, being not maintained. So is there a solution for that? What do you do about that? I mean, she looks like, I don't know. She's doing a great job. I think this is stock footage. I don't know if this is real. Um... <laughs> But um, I'm just thinking through it, you know, trying to be realistic. This is a very beautifully maintained apartment. It's like, okay, you get them into the apartment, but if they're extremely addicted to drugs and, you know, there's a lot more to the apartment than just that. What about their clothes? Would they have dirty clothes everywhere? What about, you know, buying things like detergent and stuff for the for the dishes would they have dirty dishes do you have to send in someone like almost like a hotel like someone there to help clean the place to keep this apartment building because you don't want the apartment building all becoming you no know, run down i don't know how all this works we do have homeless shelters over here in america and i guess i guess the way it works is they they, you can go sleep there until it's full, in which case you're out of luck for the night. But um, And then I guess they clean it. Like You, you have to leave, and then they, they fix it up, and you can come back that night. I think that's how that works. Back into the society. Hopefully I'm making sense here. Now, naturally, this costs a lot of money. The Finnish government spends a lot of money on buying apartments and turning them into homeless housing, subsidizing developers who build this housing, heavily subsidizing the rent, and employing a lot of social workers that work with the homeless people. And that's not cheap. But even so, according to Finnish statistics, no, it actually financially pays off. A study of financial costs shows that Finland actually saves 15,000 euros a year on every homeless person it houses. Even You know, maybe maybe these countries can do that because they're not spending trillions of dollars over decades and decades on random wars and stuff around the world. And I'm not just talking about present day, I'm talking about for decades. It's like, I don't think America is going to pay for any of this because we'd rather just pay for um, never-ending war around the world <laughs> and our own military, like trillions of dollars. <laughs> um, it would be nice to see some of that money going toward this type of these type of projects. Even though it spends money on housing and social workers, it's still a lot cheaper than to bear the cost of emergency care, policing, justice mm. system, and all the costs that come with having homeless people living on the street. And so in the end, it's a model that kind of works. That's so true, because, you know, it costs you money regardless. The problem costs money regardless of what's happening. It costs money to the economy. Just by having, you know, these these encampments. I mean, if you go to large cities, there are parts that are in like homeless encampments. And obviously that has an impact on the economy there. And so no matter how you cut it, you're going to have to pay some somehow, some way. So you might as well do it in a very humane way like this. I, I really admire this.
works for everyone. It's definitely better for the homeless people who don't have to live on the street or in often dangerous temporary shelters. It's better for the regular people who don't have to deal with criminality, drug use, and other issues that come with people living on the street. And it's actually better even for the government that ends up saving money. But if it works in Finland, why aren't we doing it everywhere? And would it be successful? Well, that's a tricky question. And there are both practical and ideological reasons why Finland is still unique in this approach. First, even if you wanted to, it's not actually that easy to just take what Finland is doing and apply it somewhere else. For example, the basic condition to give away housing is that you need to have enough of it. And since most countries are going through a housing crisis, that's not that easy. One of the reasons why... That's why I was saying, you know, first things first, we gotta build more houses. Finland is able to do it is because cities in Finland tend to... I mean, honestly, if they were giving away free houses here in America, and this sounds... I know people are gonna be like, that's stupid, but there are people... There's so many people desperate to buy houses that cannot afford houses to where it's like... You'd probably have people trying to game the system into where it's like, okay, yeah, I'm homeless. I want I want in that free house or free apartment because housing is crazy expensive. I don't know. To own most of the land, and so they're able to use that to build a lot of social housing units, but that's not common. And so even though this policy is successful in Finland, it can fail in other places. California, for example, has been trying the housing first policy as well for mm. the past 10 years, but it hasn't really seen the same results. And <laughs> you don't say. Homelessness is the worst in California. That's because it lacks everything that is required for this policy to be successful. Unlike Finland, California has incredibly strict development rules and really expensive real estate, which means that building social... That's why the housing is so... or that's why the homelessness is such a problem. Housing in large quantities is kind of impossible. And even then, housing is just a part of it. In order to replicate how it works in Finland, you also need a really strong social security system, a lot of social workers, and access to healthcare, mental health institutions, and addiction treatments. But California doesn't really have any of that. But even more than for practical reasons, this policy is often rejected on ideological grounds. There is a deep-rooted idea that homeless people should deserve housing rather than just get it, and that doing so creates a bad precedent. Even though in this case... I think he... he that was a, kind of a weird way of saying that. Um, he's saying there's a deep-rooted idea that homeless people don't deserve housing unless they work for it to earn it that's what i believe he was saying um which is true and some some people would hold that idea to be true not very many people in california would i think that's probably why you know as he's saying california is attempting this homeless home, home first policy thing because out of all the states they are very um left wing so yeah i don't think there's a lot of people in california saying oh you don't deserve a house <laughs> i just don't think i mean of course there's some you're gonna find people like that every anywhere in the world there's gonna be some someone it's like, Ed, don't give them my house. They don't deserve it. Ace, that's not really what the data and the evidence are telling us. So although Finland has some unique advantages, this model can be applied elsewhere. But in order to be successful, it requires a lot of invested resources, ability to commit for decades rather than for years. And in the end, it needs to be just a part of a wider, well-functioning system. This is just an interesting thing. What It looks like a alien UFO landed here. <laughs> it crash landed here. That's that's the UFO. Wow. Term of social safety nets that help people from getting off the ground. And so it looks like Finland will probably keep its unique position for a bit longer. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's really awesome and that's really cool to see. And 
you know, it's a little, at the same time, it's a little disappointing for the reasons he just said, like, you know, it's uniquely functional in Finland because they have a lot of land and stuff. It's a very difficult problem. And honestly, I think anyone who says it's not is not telling the truth. <laughs> it's extremely difficult problem. Luckily, I'm not in charge. You know, the people have not elected me to solve this issue yet. <laughs> if they do, then I'm going to have to sit there and think about it for a very long time. Because that's tough. You definitely have to start by building more houses. I think that's obvious. Anyway, go check out his channel, Explained with Dom. That was a great video. I'll see you guys tomorrow.